Hi everyone, it's Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending November the 5th, 2021. And what a week it has been. Not only did the Atlanta Braves win the World Series, but the indexes knocked as many homers this week comparatively. Okay, so we ended up on very strong notes uh, here on Friday after a spectacular jobs report really set the indexes roaring back. That on the heels of Pfizer's announcement this morning that it had uh, a pill that was 89% effective at, at reducing or eliminating death or severe illness due to the COVID-19. So that brings sharply into focus the end of the COVID pandemic. So we will uh, start taking care of these bottlenecks and supply chains in the United States and around the world very quickly now moving forward and the economy is very, very strong. Just some, uh, some, some, some edges here that need to be smoothed over in terms of employment and, and, and uh, what have you on those lines. The big sectors here are entertainment and leisure. That's where all, most of the jobs came back at tremendously. Uh, consumer discretionary is just really spiking it out as well. Uh, seeing value, um, you know, perhaps uh, somewhat intuitive, uh, intuitively obvious, but value just really uh, comes screaming back. And so all of the indexes and in strong up trends right now and uh, overbought, okay? So this is the time when you start really focusing on your risk tolerance and communicating with us as your advisor and making decisions about, you know, uh, how, how we, how we, where we go from here as this, uh, as this rally continues. Uh, we've got new support levels now that have uh, been created. And so we're getting into a different landscape going forward. And we're also approaching the end of 2021, which is the tax year. So all of these things will start coming into focus over the next six to eight weeks. And we'll have to deal with those. Uh, speaking of dealing with things, I wanted to shift over into a discussion on planning and the big P word that can wreck a portfolio. Let's get into it. Let's discuss the P word that can wreck a portfolio, and that is essentially procrastination. And why do we procrastinate? It's because of indecision, okay? And what is indecision? That's worry. So worry is indecision, and we need to resolve that in order to have peace of mind. So how do we resolve indecision and, and, and eliminate worry? We do it through purposeful planning. And that's where we want to head this week. Why do people procrastinate about planning? First of all, because it's painful, all right? It's hard work. It requires some real concentration and some time dedication because these are complex issues that we're talking about, complex issues that are, that are involved, and everybody needs help. It's too much to do by yourself. It's too much to do it yourself. And it is, it is ill-advised because you don't have an objective viewpoint for yourself. It's the same reason that professionals seek outside professionals to help them in their situations is because we don't, any of us want to get into yet that other P word phrase, physician heal thyself. Not a good place to be. So a lot of these problems are created and brought about by ego, all right? Uh, ego, you have to address it because what you're addressing when you address uh, your retirement situation is your achievements in life and did they make the mark that you had set for yourself. And then additionally, as Americans, you know, we've, we've been taught uh, a, a big sense of self-worth about our accumulations or, or not and so that is why I say the ego plays a, a, a lot in this, and we have to address those as adults getting ready to enter a phase of intentional unemployment where then we have to rely upon our accumulations to last us the remainder of our days, and that involves transitioning from accumulation to, in large part, spending and spending down, and that has to be very strategic, tactically managed, and intentionally done. And, and, and 
along these lines in, in the terms of, of the painful sector, the painful part of planning, is we have to address our own mortality. And we have to address what we want done or what we don't want done. And we have to address the time factor. It's easy. I always teach in my classes, it's easy to determine from where we are now to when we think we're going to retire. What's the difficult is dealing with the unknown of once we do retire and enter into that intentional period of unemployment. How long is that going to last? And that is simply because of the unknown of our own mortality. And we have to address that. And there are ways to quantify that in the law of large numbers. And we know how to do that. And so that is part of the, of the issue of dealing with the pain and setting that aside so that once we've addressed that, it's no longer painful. Now, let's move on to the next P in planning, and that is pocket. I'm going to term it as pocket because what we have to do is address the cookie on the jar philosophy that most people have. They want to see that pot that they've created, especially people that have created a couple of million dollars, and they want to believe that that can always be there and nothing will happen to that. They can look at it, they can spend it down, they can do a lot of things with it, but there is a pro there are several problems with having it in, in a pocket like that, in a single pocket. And it, one is that we're not dealing effectively with longevity risk, okay? And especially sequence of return risks, because if that pocket is all in the market, even if it's if we've dealt with it in a tax-free situation, we have it in a tax-free bucket, if that money is in the market in one pocket. We're still subject to sequence of return risk in that portfolio and then withdrawal rate risk because life is not going to be a, 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 a straight line for us. There are going to be uh, twists and turns that come along and there are going to be curveballs and sliders that come our way. And any of those, if we're planning on the, the, the pocket being so big at the beginning, you got to remember that we're drawing that down and you got to remember that in the drawing down part, you may end up in some years having to draw more than what you uh, had anticipated. And if those coincide with down years, then sequence of returns can really wreak a lot of havoc on that portfolio. That's another reason that we propose compartmentalization in our plans. And so we are uh, rather dealing not unlike the not having your eggs all in one basket approach, even though, uh, you know, in terms of diversification, we're all in a particular tax-free allocation. We still want to compartmentalize those various aspects of this into operating, safe, and at-risk type of assets. So at least we need to compartmentalize into those three segments. And there's various ways to do this, but we know how to do this effectively and make sure that in the process of compartmentalization, you aren't sacrificing your overall long, uh, portfolio to, to longevity risk in the grand sense. And so that we've got all of the foundation well laid in terms of lifestyle. That's the first thing we do is make sure that we maintain the lifestyle that you say that you want to uh, live and deserve to live in order to be happy throughout the remainder of your life. And then we, then we deal with the other layers that go on top of making that lifestyle. Then we go about the other, setting aside uh, pockets of money for other goals that you have, all in the process of getting rid of the two major factors in, in retirement of risk. Uh, the two major risks are tax rate risk and longevity risk, which are multiplied by all of the other fa sub factors of sequence of return risk or withdrawal rate risk, uh, inflation and long term care risk. So, once we've mitigated those risks and made sure that we have a good foundation, then we can build a pyramid on up from there, ending, of course, at the top, which is generally legacy and charitable uh, intentions. All right. And then let's move in then to the last uh, area, uh, the last P. Uh, of planning and that is that we have to address and we do address with each client as a fiduciary, You've been a fiduciary for 
over 25 years, okay? It's nothing new, it's not new grounds for this firm, and what we do is we know that this is private, we know that this is personal, we know there are security issues, we have addressed those, we maintain diligent watch over those issues in terms of uh, internet and communications and those types of things, and we certainly realize that we're dealing with sacred money that we manage and how we help plan and how we advise people use that sacred money because it's 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 your life's work it's your life's work that you should be congratulated on and it should be addressed accordingly and and that's what we do in our planning that's why we're willing to get up early and stay late night after night as long as it takes in order to make sure we're delivering the best uh, product that we can, the best service that we can to our, our clientele, and that reduces indecision, eliminates worry, and at the end of the day, if you stop procrastinating, you end up with peace of mind. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Contact us, see how we can help you, and bring that peace of mind to you so that you're no longer one of the procrastinators. You've got peace of mind. You're preserving that portfolio instead. All right, reach out to us, assetguidancegroup.com, 404-348-4120. I'll see you next week.